congratulations. How are you feeling after that performance? Feel great. Uh, a little bumps and cuts, but I'm all right. Is that the way you thought the fight was going to go? No, honestly, we thought they would be more patient. I think they came and tested the wrong fires, and uh, I could feel after the first round, uh, Damon was kind of like doing desperate moves, uh, you know, trying to catch my back and stuff like that, and it just felt like uh, we're ahead of the game. Did you have to make adjustments in there, or did it go to plan? No, nah, that's that's my game. I, I like making it dirty, bloody, uh, you know, keep it a um, mixed martial arts fight. You know, I, I, I did throws, I did punches, elbows. But, you know, I did what it, uh, a lot of other fighters don't do normally, and uh, made it fun. Were you surprised that it was so difficult to finish him? Uh, yeah, well, he's a tough guy. He's been in for, uh, the business for a long time. I knew my, my corner even told me, you know, like, uh, we can't get too excited if we, you know, we kind of like rock him a little and stuff like that. But stay composed and, you know, do what we can to stay on track and get the win or the finish. Did you learn anything about yourself in there, or is that something you have to look at maybe in two or three weeks and, and kind of adjust and watch it over a few times? Uh, I just learned more that more and more that I'm just a, a different dog. I, I got that different style, a different heart, different mentality for this game. Um, I came in here, you know, after beating, especially a guy like that, Damon Jackson, in this kind of division, just shows me if, what potential I have in the future in this division. And uh, this week was the first time that the commission only allowed an hour to weigh in rather than the two hours normally. I'm wondering if that had any effect on your weight cut or what happened there. No, nah, I just. We, we kind of calculated the weight cut kind of wrong, especially with the Vegas heat and everything, and uh, kind of shot my body. And uh, honestly, I was so embarrassed that it, I was probably like gonna throw the fight. And you know, I was like, you know what? If because I have so much respect for the people that lose the weight, do the time, do everything else. And that's why I kind of felt I felt bummed and didn't want to like embarrass myself. I didn't even want to come to the arena and stuff like that. But my corner kept me in line and was like, hey man, we got to do what we can. Uh, if they don't want to fight, that's fine, but we're going to try to do what we can, and that's what we did. They, I, I got the, they got a little extra percentage on that, um, and I was willing to give up the pay or whatever, and they were down to fight, and we just said yes, and we went out there and performed. So what's next for you? When would you like to fight again, or an opponent, or anything like that? Uh, there, there's not really any specific opponent. I, I just want to fight everybody, you know? Like, I, I'm not scared of anybody in the featherweight division, the lightweight division. I'm just ready to come in here and own whatever, you know, whoever's in, in my way, you know? I, uh, it's part of the, the journey. Right now, I'm 4 and on the UFC, and I want, just want to keep it up, and we run into a ranked opponent, that's great. If we run into a, some, uh, you know, some guy who's an upcomer, that's cool too, but I'm ready to uh, leave a mark this uh in this division i assume you want to fight again you think maybe another one before the end of the year or yeah but if i could get everything kind of locked in uh physically you know with the weight cut stuff and and really uh put a dial on that and work with the ufc team uh, and honestly i was trying to do the cuts and stuff but the ufc doctor cut me off at 150 and i still was losing weight just chilling so it was like all right well you know, if I if I fix these little things, I, I know we can we can do the, a lot of things. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, hey, you just said you know you can fight anybody, but between, between these names, Steve Garcia, Joe Anderson Brito, Bryce Mitchell, you know, very 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 good at Gillespie. You said a lot of those names. Who who would you fight? Any of them. I re I've had this interview already before. You know, like there's not. I, I've asked for rematches with those guys, and they're, they're they want to. As you can see in this UFC, you know, there's different routes. You know, they choosing a different route. You know, look, I'm four and zero. They they have losses in the UFC. You know, even Berto. I, I say, you know, what's up, Berto? You know, like I, I I'm not scared of nobody. You know, even if he's knocking out. That's cool. That's cute. You know, that was a couple years ago. I'm a new transformed fighter and. and Congrats. Thank you. Jeff, over here, just one. Um, so I know we always talk about how you work with Justin Gagey and get that experience, but how important is it to get this live experience in a real fight? Uh, well, this, 
this is a cooler experience, you know, it's a little arena, you know, not so much cheering or booing, you know, and I like it because I can hear my corner a lot more, uh, you know, Vegas don't got that, you know, that it's a tax-free kind of state, you know, so I like that, but, you know, I, I like, you know, I like betting anywhere, anytime, you know, like it, it's big arena, small arena, whatever it is, to, just to show who I am in this, in this whole fight game, uh, I show them I, I'm, I'm able to perform at short notice, even when I am this way and I'm already bummed out and I'm meant to be fully there, but I can still go out there. You like the, you know, the cage door and let's go. How important is it for your evolution to get tested like that for 15 months? Oh, it's great. I, I love it. This is, uh, you know, David Jackson was a huge name when I was kind of going up. You know, I wanted to fight him in LFA when he was a champion, but he had a different route and I had a different route. So it was great to, we finally meet, you know, and then, uh, I went out there and I really outperformed them. Thank you. Thank you. Just a quick one. We saw your eye get kind of cut up a little bit. How many stitches did you end up uh, getting them for? It's all glue. Oh, really? It's all glue, not deep enough, man. It's all glue. Uh, when that happens, does that fire you up? Because it seemed like you fired up. I don't know if when you see that, you immediately think that maybe there's a potential that it's worse than it is. So you try to go for the finish because it seemed like it amped you up and you, you just kind of went hot wild after that one. Yeah, probably, man. I think it, you get a different kind of oxygen when you get cut, you know? Like, you feel the air go in there, you feel everything else, you know? Like, everything kind of boils up. But um, I honestly get cut like this in, in practice sometimes, and I, I obviously can't kill my, you know, my practice partner. So it's about keeping it maintained, but my corner kept me focused, maintained, and didn't really, I didn't want to out-punch myself or try to out-condition myself, but I felt good, I felt, you know, relaxed. I was very surprised that they were trying to grapple, like, way more. Like, he was kind of trying to, like my partner was saying, he was trying to hug his way to victory, and I was like, man, that's not gonna happen to you. Yeah, there was definitely, I think you cut him on the back of his head, I don't know if that was an elbow that got him or something. There was a couple times where he did shots and he looked like he was trying to complain that you were hitting him on the back of the head. Were those shots clean, or was there any other shots in the Man, room? the thing is, man, I, I'm doing clean. I, I'm, I'm hitting at one area. If you if you move your head, back of your head, towards my fist, that's your fault. I even told him, hey, sorry. You know, in the round, I'm talking and apologizing, and I was happy to do that. Yeah. I don't, but I was like, all right, well, you think I'm trying to do that. Well, you're sorry. You know, you're going <laughs> to switch it. You know, oh, my bad. You know, like, like I, I, try, I try to still keep it clean but fun, and... And even the ref was like, fine, you're fine, you're fine. And he's just complaining the whole time. So I, I felt like, you know, he came here more to complain than fight. You're not one to talk much in the fight, or is that something that was just sort of out of character that you actually were chatting with him? Uh, out of character? Well, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a dirty fighter. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to anybody, man, uh, especially in this sport. I love everybody in it. Anybody that does this is a, is a crazy man, but I respect them a thousand percent. Uh, but. You know, I'm doing what the ref is letting me do. You know, he's, he's saying everything's good, everything's good. Okay, well, it's good. If he's crying, that's not on me, man. It, it's on him. You know, it, you came here to fight or did you come here to complain? You know, and I, and, you know, and it's the same thing. He hit me in the groin. You know, like nobody wants to polite on that. No, if you, you can see all these opponents always want to trigger the wrong check. You know, they want to hit me in the groin. They want to poke me in the eyes. They want to make it dirty. Cool, we can make it dirty, but when I'm playing dirty, then the dogs are crying, you know? Like, like, come on, let's have some fun, you know? Congrats on the victory. Thank you. Chef, an awesome performance tonight. <coughs> Thank you. Not even a question, just have to point out how cool you look, but there's blood dripping from your left eye. That's, <laughs> that's fire, bro. That's, yeah, that's tasty. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier that some that fighters don't do. Obviously, this is not so soon, you know, come to that grappling stop. So you want to mix it up and make it exciting. And that way people say like, oh man, you could have just like George St. Pierre this thing, like it's gonna be great five minutes. But no, you want to give fans a little bit of everything, but still show your dominance. Of course, man, um, especially when I'm on my back or whatever, any position I was throwing up, you know, hammer fists, elbows, everything. You know, I mean, it, it's a fight, you know, it's an MMA fight. You know, there's I do things that a lot of guys don't do, you know, and I try to make it, active everywhere, uh, consistently show that I have strikes anywhere I'm at. You know, I could be on my back, I could be on top, I could, you know, we could be scramble, scramble, scramble. Oh, there was a couple strikes in that scramble, you know, and that's what I want to do is just keep it entertaining, you know, and, and obviously for the fans, for everyone else, but I just know those extra little strikes 
it, it's it's making a fighter be like, oh shit, this is this is a whole different animal. You know? Oh no doubt, and we've talked to many guys and girls in there that say this isn't just grappling, this isn't just a Greco Roman wrestling match. Like the fact that you can throw strikes throws everything off for a guy who's not accustomed to that. Mm -hmm. So that's great to keep that you know your bag of tricks. Also mentioned different routes. So what clearly what you mean and, and help me understand is you're willing to take the tough fights. You're not gonna just like pick and choose, like, oh let me get this record going real nice and, and you know, stay undefeated in the UFC. Give me the smoke with anybody. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah, man. It, it's crazy because I've seen other fighters really pick and choose their fights and it's kind of some BS for me, you know, and it's like, man, like that's not what fighting is for. Like I was on the USA team, I fought on the MMA app, and I didn't pick and choose nobody. You know, I was like, oh, that one's guy wants to fight, all right, let's go. And that's what I kind of look at it. You know, in this in the UFC, I don't want to be like, oh yeah, no, I'd rather have an easier route. You know, like as you can see, I fought three other monsters, and then I fought Amy Jackson. Well experience, been in in it for so many years in the UFC and fighting other tough contenders. Uh, just to keep showing people, like, man, I, I'm here to fight the best because I want to be. A champion one day. You have to fight the best to become the best, no doubt. Sure. How great was it that the UFC gave you this co main event slot? Because the fact that you got the show out 3026, 3025, I mean, you put on a clinic, and as the co main event, mm -hmm. more eyes on you. ESPN put on that. Yeah, man, it, it's, it's just, it's, you know, the thing I've been chasing for since I was little, man. I I, I knew when I started chasing this uh, for my mother's passion, like, like, this is not gonna be easy. She said, this is like one of the hardest things to art. Like, you know, you're doing it alone, you're coming from the hood, you're not, you don't got expenses, you don't got nothing, you, but you got heart. You know, I want you to, you know, win this and do this with your heart, and that's what I've been doing. If you know she's watching, it's just like super proud that, that you know, big boy is just killing it. Mm. We've got that big win, everybody is on notice, but, What's kind of crazy is that extra opponent in there, that Vegas Heat. We had that Tavares part fight canceled because of his weight cut and the, you know, the difficulties with this. How much of an issue is fighting in Las Vegas this time of the year that you have to incorporate that now into your weight cutting regimen and how hot it is and how that affects the everybody? Well, it's part of the job, man. Like, I, I kind of, <clears throat> like, if I did, we calculated the, the numbers the right way and did it the right way, I think it would have been excellent. You know, I, I've done, I did it here before with Sherry A, you know, and uh, I obviously was the same, you know, uh, season, you know, that I were in the summer. Um, so you got to kind of do your homework. You got to, you know, know what time you're going, what you're going to do, the cuts and stuff like that, and the right nutrition, and, and I think everything will go smooth just like today. Last for me, super big win. You, you know, now you got some momentum going. What happens the rest of the year? What are, what's, what's on the to do list? What are you looking for in 2024 to really put, like, you know, a stamp on this year for you? Uh, just keep winning, man. Like, um, right now, I kind of want to go back to my team, talk to them, fix some stuff for this, you know, nutrition and this mental health stuff, and, you know, really get things going and hopefully get a big name, you know, in November, December, and Keep it going, yeah. Are you mean like a like a sports psychologist, or what are we doing? Yeah, just to keep things intact, man. Like, and there's a lot of things that um, you know. Even Patty Pibble has said it. You know, there's a lot of guys who kind of go in this game, kind of like headstrong. I really kind of being verbal. Like I've told my corner and everybody else, like I'm trying to be more verbal, of how I feel, things like that. And they've listened to me very well. We're we're four and zero in UFC, and still, you know, ride or die on this. So, man, it's super great to. That you and I appreciate you for that. That you're using your platform for that and to bring awareness. So much prop, awesome win, well done. Thank you.